All right, guys, let's just get right into it. Hi, my name's Dan. This is uh, Alvin Novus Creative Stream. This video is a live Q&A. We're going to be uh, looking at Art Rage Vitae, VT. Still don't know how to pronounce it. Still going to be stupid at it. Um, yeah, this is just a kind of a, a live Q&A showing you guys features and other things that I found very useful in what I do on Art Rage. Um, this is also a response to a kind of a critique that was more of a criticism than anything else of showing what you really can do with ArtRage and the features that are available to users. So let's go ahead and get started right there. I will be moving around the camera a little bit. So this is the initial setup for ArtRage Vitae or any other ArtRage, pretty standard since fifth. And what we have here in this area, we of course have our tools, settings, stencil, stickers, presets, color, layers, anything else. Now, any of these menus can be opened up into little menu things like this. This is basically layout, save, open, whatnot, uh, references if you have them, and all that. Now, there is another option, and this was a question. Hey, Puppet Master, once again, good to see you. Puppet Master, thank you so much for bumping into these live streams. I'd just like to personally thank you. It's, you're always here, and I always appreciate it, and hope you're feeling better today. Uh, we're going over features really quick, so let's go over the layout. Uh, first off, if we come up here and we hit view, this is all about the different layouts. Now, this isn't my usual, the, the initial layout for RH is not what I usually use. What I usually use is quite different. First of all, I'm going to go into docking mode. And docking mode is going to change, get rid of all the stuff in here. So we just have a basic screen and a basic um, shows pretty much basic everything else. So let's go ahead and we're going to start docking things. On the sides, when I get a tool, you'll see a little dock over here, dock over here. And also, I want to do something else. I'm going to hit lights out because I like the dark feel. It reminds me of Photoshop and some other programs I use. So let's go ahead and dock this. Now I have my tools. Let's go ahead and find something else. Let's go ahead and again, view. Let's go color picker over here. We'll just put that over there because I want it to resemble Photoshop or something to that that I'm usually working in with other software. Again, and let's go to tool settings. Now this one's kind of important. We'll get into that a little later. We'll put that under tools. Back to view, toolbox panel, we'll get into that later. I'm going to dock that one as there as well. Uh, I don't know, let's do some other stuff. Tool presets. Let's do, you know what, instead of putting, well, we already have presets right there, so let's not worry about that too much. Uh, color samples, that's going to be important to me. And let's go with, I don't know, stickers. Basically, any of the things are dockable, and you can change pretty much anything you want in ArtRage. Then I have access to pretty much anything I want. We can always change, you know, add oil, blend that a little bit, switch over to our, you know, brush, that, 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 that. I would like to, now that I'm in here, let's go ahead and grab the layer panel. Uh, I like teaching. I like helping people answer questions. This is, uh, this is, to me, this is something that kind of changed my life. And it's something that I do to help people that have, like, questions. Um, and honestly, to answer your questions, it's a lot of stupid practice. It's a lot of things that I do to um, try to improve my life. Also, with Art Rage recently and these videos... This has been a, um, we're going to get rid of the sticker sheet because I don't like it there. We'll get our layers there. This has been something for me to, to deal with some health things, to deal with some kind of very difficult, uh, difficult moments in my life. And I found enriching people and empowering people are my pretty much favorite thing to do. 
Hope that answered the question. Kind of personal. Thank you for the question there, Puppet Master. Hopefully people will go on YouTube and look at these questions. Uh, let's go ahead and let's look at some of the tools available now. And again, thank you for your question there. Let's get rid of this stuff that I've been kind of dueling with. And let's go ahead and look at the tools itself. First, we're going to have our brush. This is just a standard oil brush. Blends really well, just like an oil brush. The pressure of this, we're going to also increase. Now, something else that we have here is with any of the brushes, if you right click on the tool itself, go to tool presets we can look at the different presets that it can give us or we can right click on the ones we want now for the sake of this i'm going to switch back to the usual view go back to cl classic mode and the reason i'm doing that is so we're referencing the tools in art rage to something that people are familiar with so Brushes here. Let's go ahead and look at the settings. We have pressure. We have thinners. We have loading depth, which is kind of nice. Also, there's a, I put it square head if you need to. So we can do a really smooth oil brush with a lot of thinners. If you've done a lot of oil painting, this is a very... Let's not auto-clean that because, you know, that's kind of boring. This is a very good example of how oils behave physically. Okay, let's go ahead and look at another tool. This is probably my favorite tool, is the is the watercolor brush. And again, same thing. Let's drop the thinners down. It behaves just like you know, maybe thinners back up a little bit. It behaves just like a a. <laughs> Sorry, can't think. Watercolor. We can also have some presets to get a desired thing. I like coloring with dry strokes and also the heavy bleed. If I'm doing a project that requires anything like that, that's kind of my default for using a water brush. Blends well. And again, the loading, the thinners. Thinner should be like water. <laughs> See, more water you add, the more color is you're going to and more effect it's going to have on the color as such okay next we have yield and my favorite absolutely probably my favorite technical feature here is the uh it's what we call the knife brush this is pretty much how i make my maps we come in we can add a harsh chaos we can do instant blurring. We can blend colors like crazy. Just like a knife palette, uh, knife edges. If you're familiar with kind of the Bob Ross school of style with a lot of hard edges. Small frost, tiny frost, all that stuff. Let's go ahead and clear that layer. It's getting a little messy. So we have a ton of knife brushes. Uh, most of them behave just like a knife. However... Some behave a little bit differently. Let's go ahead and make that a little bit smaller. Okay, so we got a big blob of paint. We go back into our knife. And we can kind of do a blurred frosting. Kind of a wire knife or anything like that. Hard out smear. And honestly, the smear thing is great. Because on other programs, comparing this to a standard, your smear or anything like that always causes massive headaches. A hard out smear, so this would be just dragging your knife directly across the paint. You're putting it down and you're dragging it out. Hard wet blend would be taking a knife, putting it in a medium to spread it out, and putting a little bit of little bit of liquid on there again insta blur ton of different settings on this now let's go ahead and go into a preset well let me we'll get to that later let me change that 
Uh, next is the airbrush. Something I love on the airbrush is that it be it behaves like well, guess what? An airbrush. Okay, if you're into model work, if you're into like uh, painting miniatures, this is going to feel very familiar to you. The pressure, the tilt angle, if you need a tilt angle, hardness, and dip spread, depending on what you want to do there. So if we turn pressure down, drop the hardness down, it actually looks like a, there we go, a little speckling, if that's something you so choose to. I actually use the airbrush for pretty much all my coloring with maps and crazy other stuff like that. Let's get rid of that. Go to ink pen. Pretty, pretty standard. You have a ton of different ink pens. Uh, you got a billboard as such. And again, I'm just using the mouse here. Arch multiply. That's always kind of cool. Like a, uh, like your standard school marker. No anti-aliasing. And if we want to look at the different settings of all these, you know, we can also each brush, we'll get into this a little bit later, but each brush has the ability to pretty much do anything. All right. Next on the line, we have our pencil. Let's go ahead and clear that layer. Add a layer. Oops. Add a layer. Clear that layer. Pencil's kind of fun. Uh, you do have, instead of a hardness, they give you kind of more of an effect. Uh, auto smooth. If you're doing like quick, let's say I'm doing a thumbnail. You know, we kind of an auto smooth there. We'll get someone. We'll get someone in there. But again, just using mouse to do this. So please forgive me. I'm doing this, you know, without edit. So you can kind of see the auto smooth there. Also shading, if we so feel inclined, if we want to adjust the settings on that. We can also apply the softness, shading, fine coloring, etc., etc., and so forth. All right. Next, of course, is our gigantic. Let's turn that down a bit. Paint roller. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Standard paint roller. We can also do it thick. And it just behaves like a paint roller. If that's your thing. I really don't use this brush too much. But it behaves, as I said, like that. Get a new layer. We're going to clear this layer. All right. Hard tip markers. Cool. Anything like that. This, this pen's fun. This is our gel pen. We're going to, and it, it can be actually quite fun to use. As such. Um, I really haven't used a gel pen, full disclosure, in real life. I know some people really love it. I'm, I like this one though. This one's kind of fun. <laughs> kind of like a spray can. They're kind of fuzzy. Fun stuff there. We'll get into the custom brushes a little layer. Crayons. Or I prefer to have it like if we could call it a wax. Because it behaves more like a wax. A colored wax than an actual crayon. Okay, let's clear that layer. So we can actually see what's going on. Next feature. Okay, the sticker feature. I absolutely love these stickers. Okay, right now this is the default setting for RH Vitae. And it just basically has your... At first they seem, oh, it's little fun stickers and stuff like that. Which it, which it is. You know, I'm throwing something down there, an instant texture. Uh, but there's, there's also some other stuff that I really like to do with stickers. Um, I also use stickers as if I'm going to do a custom brush. We'll do that in another video. I use these stickers to actually produce. We're going to lock that transparency. We can actually add mass to these stickers. 
and create different effects. Like right now, I'm adding a ton of mass to that. We'll get into that on another video, but you get the idea. Let's go into presets. Come in here, and we can do other things like that. If you really need to paint pictures with heavy, thick, um, you know, thick blobs of paint, you can actually use some of these stickers as a kind of a template to put over those thick blotches of paint. Let's say if we're doing a, let's go back to this, back some Pollock, Pollock, yeah, we can actually use this as an initial way to blend some of this out. And with the stickers, you know, there's, let's look at all of them. You got some art brushes, you know, little bristles. You can actually import any Photoshop or any other standard brush into this. And they're not just they're not just cute fun stuff for you know like kids or stuff like that. It actually is the more you start using the brushes, uh, the sticker spray, the better it is. I I think the and it's my personal opinion that the if we're calling these a sticker spray, it's really not accurate. It's more of a built-in template or effect. All right, see, so just a ton of fun stuff. You can also make these are really cool. I'm going to get into this a little bit later because you can make some really cool dungeon maps and stuff like that, trim, etc. so forth. These are just fun brushes. Oh, look, mountains. That's kind of cool. I might just use that. Hey, I found something. We need some dots, finger paint. And again, as you notice, everything, holiday lights, hairbrush, I use these a ton. Nature shapes, I use these a ton. Sticker sprays, you know, you know, we can change the color and stuff like that. Um, you know, something fun to do. But the art clippings and art brushes and stickers, I absolutely love. Now... We'll get into this a little bit later. And again, eraser. You got different types of erasers. You can do soft, hard. Of course, you can adjust all, everything with your eraser center. Pretty self-specific. This is the uh, paint tube. I have a couple friends that really like doing... Let's kind of look at this really quick. Like doing... Let's say we're doing a figure drawing. Okay, let's get a basic face. No. We're just going to do some basic, basic stuff with this. And then let's go into kind of a highlight for this. Get a really thick paint. You can go in with and blend it a little bit later. This would take some time to kind of show exactly what I'm doing, but I think with this face, the highlights and lowlights, with that tube brush, you can kind of see what I'm getting at. And then we just kind of use the tube a little bit more, and we're just plastering this with paint. So I come back here, let's get a little, let's go a little bit darker. Maybe under eyes, under nose. You get the idea. So paint tube, when you have to put a tube of paint everywhere and you need a lot of paint in place fast. Now, I'm going to address this right now. If you notice with the paint tube, we're getting a ton of paint and the paint actually is stacking. You see, Art Rage doesn't just put change pixels or doesn't put a physical picture, a physical, um, you know, a physics behind the pixel. Well, actually it does. You have the pixel, physics of the pixel, and then it keeps track of how much paint you're putting on said pixel. If you can see, like right here, let's zoom in here. We have a ton of paint there. And if I apply pressure to it, you can see it kind of digs in. Let's go ahead and look at the knife itself. You can see the amount. 
Now, this is not just effect. It's not just putting a shadow down. It's actually keeping track of how much paint is on each little pixel. And this for me, oops, accidentally cleared. And this for me, if I'm doing some like shadows in this, it is one of the most, it's probably one of the best features of Art Rage is the ability for it to stack paint. Let's go ahead and look at some other stuff. Just kind of finish up the list. Uh, we have Glitter, the Herpes of Arts and Crafts. But this adds kind of a texture, kind of a shape, a massive shape uh, ma and mass to something. Um, at first, it can kind of seem a little childish. But then when you discover, you know, hey, look, I need some flecking. Or if I'm doing a, uh, like a stucco image or something like that, it has a really fun and a very effective way to add mass with the texture. Okay, let's go ahead, another layer. Now, let's go ahead and probably the the best features of Art Rage is the brush, the brush fit designer. Okay. So let's go ahead in the brush designer. And there's some presets. And I think a lot of people overlook all the different brushes in the brush designer. Okay, someone's already gone through with the basic program and made a ton of different brushes. And you can, hey, you can make your own hatching. And again, I don't think this is a feature that's often explored with Art, Art Rage. But every time they release a new version, this just gets, I mean, check this out. Right now, I usually do mountains, and I just discovered this one. And this is going to give me exactly what I want with mountains. Okay, so let's go here. Let's go back to the Harsh Chaos. We're going to increase it. And there is my mountains that I usually use. That's a lot faster. I am needing to go in and use this. So, hey, look, my mountains. Boom, done. Very cool. Now let's talk about you actually customizing your brush. Let's say we're doing this glossy bumps because I'm getting a kick out of it. Let's go to the brush designer itself. We can change the head. We can change the stroke. We can change the color settings and how they respond. We can even uh, change the texture. So let's go in here and let's change the head of this. Let's select from a collection. And instead of that, let's go with a artsy fartsy one. Let's go with this speed. And we can preview this. And look, I already have a texture. Say so I don't want that head. I'm going to select it from the collection. I can also put in bitmaps if I really want to. And, you know, maybe that. Let's go ahead and clear that. That's kind of fun. Let's go ahead and use that and make some mounts. Let's come down here. I'm going to go with a brown. I've kind of got the same thing going. Holy crap, I love this, and I've discovered a new way to, how to use Art Rage. That gives me kind of a better peaks and values. All right. Just another way. Again, that is in Brush Designer. Um, eraser mode, you can make it eraser. You can make it anything else. Let's say we're still using this. And instead of this brush, let's go ahead and go into our artistic brush. Say Bristol. Let's go ahead and start designing. We're going to change the head. Let's go to this, I don't know, watercolor-esque. That's a great little thing. Let's go ahead and change the grain. Let's go with this bubble. There we go. That's kind of neat. Let's dab spacing. Jitter. We have a nice chalk all of a sudden. Now, let's say we like that a lot. We can go ahead, put this in, uh, new preset, default settings, etc., etc., etc. The more I play with this, the more I like it. Just as you saw, I have now a new, faster way to do stuff, and I'll put that in some other videos, play with it a little bit more. So, custom brushes, very fun. Now, let's say we want to go to... Let's say, okay, that's fine and all, but what about our default brushes? Let's, let, let's I don't know, go with one of these stickers. Uh, settings and presets. Um, 
let's go ahead and go with layers. Let's make a new layer, clear that out. One that I use a lot is this uh, Moss 2. Um, and instead of a shadow, let's say I don't want a shadow. Something that I can do with this, if I put it down like this, we get kind of that mossy. Okay. Now, there is a... <laughs> When we go into the different sprays, we have on the bottom of this, we can set shadows, the positions, radius, how big it is, et cetera, et cetera, so forth. So, you know, kind of really stands out there. That's kind of fun and cool. Now, this spray variation is where things start getting very cool. A lot of the brushes have this option. Some don't. If we're, like, doing this preset, like your oils, your, a number of them do not have this, but in your sticker spray, you do have a spray variation. Something I like to do is mix things up and make it look a little bit more natural. Let's go ahead. If we see base value, it's going to, we can jog the base values. We can change them. If we double click, we can add them into. So I kind of get this, you know, you can adjust the hue. I didn't like to do that. I don't know. You can adjust the rotation. Okay. Object spray. Something I like to do with this, if I'm going into it, and you can save it, of course. I didn't on that one. I like to bump up the randomness like crazy. The scale like crazy. So this is all random. Let's put a random hue every now and again, luminosity, saturation, random alpha, and then I get some really funky variations in my spray. And again, any other brush, I have the presets as such. And I, I know there was one guy that commented on how he'd like to see a lot of different options with the brushes and other things like that. Um, and more options. And I get that, but at the same time, if you play with it a little bit more, look into it, you're going to find some other stuff. <laughs> a lot of other stuff. I do wish that our way Rage would make this brush designer a lot more prevalent because I feel it is one of the most underlooked aspects of one of the most underlooked aspects of sorry distracted by things of our age of ID so we're also going to look at something else um, let's go ahead and make another layer so we got stickers, we got sprays, we got all the different brushes. Something else that this individual mentioned is there's not really a masking feature like on ArtRage. Well, well, like on Photoshop. Well, this isn't trying to be Photoshop. Uh, let me kind of explain the masking feature of this. It's actually something called stencils. Now we have a bunch of built-in stencils, but don't let that fool you, fool you. Let's say we throw our stencil here. It just puts down a stencil. We hold down right to place it on, we click on it, hold down the right mouse to place it, and then we can, I don't know, let's go into settings for this. No tilt angle, hardness, yeah. Just preset here, big and subtle, pressure, pressure. And then we can just throw down Yeah, usually, Ethan, what's up? Sure, I'll hear a joke. And then we get a sticker spray right there. Check it out. Well, not a sticker, but a stencil. And that's fine and good. But let's go ahead and look even more into the stencils. If you right-click on it, you have a bunch, bunch of different settings. We're here. We have different gradients we can put in. We have grids. They all behave the same way. Now, let's get into the rulers. 
can we right click on the ruler and we can set a ruler we can also make this a guide to whatever we're doing measure stuff if we're doing an accurate one-to-one -one. and additional stuff like that and adjust now the stencils are just like an artist stencil you just put it down you do stuff with it Sorry, a little distracted by chat right now. All right, let's remove this. Now, back to the masking. Let's say I'm drawing something. In my case, it's usually kind of a landmass for maps. Let's just throw it in there, just kind of a random thingy. But that's smooth. And let's say I, in this case, want to add, want to add some rivers to it. So what I'm going to do is we're going to make some rivers. We're going to use the stencil to edit what is under here. So let's just put some rivers and crap in like this. This also works as kind of a masking feature. This goes beyond just locking the transparency and anything else. So I'm here. I want to basically affect the layer under this with this layer. So what I'm going to do is right click on, excuse me, the layer information right here. Let's actually move that sorry. And I'm going to hit new stencil from layer or select layer con content. Select layer contents will just select what's there. That could be fun. I've discovered recently though that if uh, I I can make a stencil which creates a stencil from the contents of the layer. And then I can move around if I want. In this case, though, let's go ahead and grab the eraser. I can, whoop, wrong one. I can select the stencil under it. Excuse me, the layer under it. I'm using the eraser to erase some of this. I have this layer. I remove the stencil. And I've actually gone in and edited the layer underneath it. Okay. Uh, so we have this stencil actually at, working as a mask. So let's again right click. Let's new stencil from content. Uh, from content, I can also invert the stencil, so it's kind of like a locked layer, and then I can move into another layer. And let's and use that as a mask inside something else. So again, really quick and dirty way, you don't have to uh, you don't have to go in and you don't have to uh, like create a mask, select a mask, go into the mask, reverse the mask. It's all right there in front of you. It's quick, it's dirty. Well, not really dirty, it's very exact. It just you can save that stencil or you can like remove the stencil in this case other things like that quick masking and it's not a masking with a manipulation of sliders it's a direct masking with realistic features ethan i'm still waiting for that joke if you got it so we've gone through layout we've gone through the different features of art rage mainly the brushes and other things like that i did want to once again touch upon let's go ahead and remove these the biggest feature of Art Rage is the one of, to me, it's one of the most important features is the lighting. Okay, the reason, and we'll get into that. Let's go into Canvas settings. Bring that over here. Canvas lighting, if we turn that off, we basically just get the, your kind of generic painting program. Okay, you'd, you know, find something on Procreate. Something like that. Pretty simple. Now, what the lighting feature does, it actually creates a physics on it. With the with the paint stacking in Art Rage tracking that, we can actually see a real time. See how I'm stacking all this paint up? If I go in with a a knife brush, I can actually, you know, it's actually really go nuts with this. You can actually cut into that. And behaves just like a physical glob paint. 
So you kind of have a physics engine inside of Art Rage itself. We can also, oops, we can also go into. Ah, I'll probably do another video on the canvas setting, but we can, uh, we can actually set a canvas to respond to our paint, and other things like that. And again, it's all about the lighting. You can of course change the lighting and how it looks, and edit and do some other stuff like that. Um. I don't want this video to go too long and I don't know how long I've been actually streaming here, but it's been a while. So again, different features. We got our layout. We just go to view. Then we can, you know, just dock the heck out of stuff. Pretty much dock anything you want. Really quick, easy to edit, easy to customize. You can save your layout tool. Interface mode, layout panel, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, so forth. You also have again. This is something for other. You also have perspectives and grids, other stuff like that. Um, and of course, you can work in it, hold down shift to adjust things, etc., etc., so forth. A lot of things to show you on this. That's why I want to just hit the three. And yeah, RH, really kind of fun. We'll get into a lot more of that later. Oh, I got to take this call, so I'm going to end it. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. I lied. I just got done with the phone call. Uh, well, I kind of cut it short. Ethan, well, Peter, hey, thanks for viewing first time. Really appreciate it. Thank you for loving the maps. If you have any questions, please, in the comments, I will answer anything um, or help with anything. These live streams, if you have something to review or if you have something you'd like to look at or talk about, uh, yeah, just throw in the comments. We can. I've also been toying with the idea of getting on Zoom with people, helping with maps, asking questions, stuff like that. Thanks. Have a good one.